What is up? Getting ready to do a repair on this 2014 Ford Escape. It's got the diagnostic trouble code for 26B7, which calls for the coolant bypass valve. Everything I've seen on the internet seems to show that to be this part right here. Was gonna maybe order it on Amazon, but I changed my mind. Went over to the Ford dealership. This was about twice as much for about 60 bucks, where it was between 30 and 40 bucks on Amazon for some no-name part, but this is an actual OEM part from Motocraft. So we're gonna be put installing that. Does not look too difficult. Looks like uh, got an O-ring on the back side of it. And a hose connects on that side, and it's got a valve there. And at first, I thought this was going to be a cylinder, but this might be motorized. We're going to take apart the old one, find out how it works. But right now, I'm going to install that. We're going to see how hard this is. We got this pop loose, a little cover here. And there's the valve down in there. It looks like just two little 8mm bolts on each side of it. A hose clamp. That's about it, one wire connector. Okay, let's get started here. Looks like this has a little yellow tab to depress. Pull up on that wire connector there. Pull that out of the way. All right, so I'm pull on this burner. Let's unplug. Coming air temperature sensor. clamp and unbolt two screws first. Yeah, let's go ahead and get this. Oh, this has one of those auto locking style. That'll be awesome. Get it down there. Yes, it locked. That's a good style. So right here, this uh, kind of hose, you can lock it and then uh, it stays uh, Expanded. And this hose, maybe I'll just loosen it a little bit. So I've tried to do this to where we're not going to lose much cooling. There we go, that's loose. This one long attachment here. Yeah. Got the universal joint. It's not the good kind, it's a U-joint style, so it's a little wobbly. Oh, yeah. I can just see this uh, bolt getting lost down here. Oop, and it did oh it stayed. Alright. Do the second one, I'm sure it's going to flow some water out. Oh yeah, there it goes. I'm going to get off of there. Seems like so far the lot hardest thing is getting that. Open that out. Here we go. Help with the old. In with the new. Put that right back. Hope the camera will be able to zoom in on it. O-ring with 
the lip seal on it, it looks like, so it didn't need much other than just to seat the bolts. I'm sure that's more than enough. So I'm going to push this on the rest of the way. The hose clamp fell down a little bit. Pretty much, um, I don't know if you guys can see, but this, like, push this down, it's gonna unlock this. There it goes, that's on. Close the, uh, that back in. Just put these back the way they were. Coming air temperature sensor, you definitely want to hook that back up. Where'd it go? I tucked it out of my way. Oh, here it is. Without that, you'll get another diagnostic trouble code. <laughs> okay, I expected that to take a little longer than that, but dropped down a little bit of a uh, coolant. It actually dropped down in here because I was up to here, so. Huh. I'll top that off a little later, but yeah, that's it. That was it. So in another video, I will uh, take this apart. We're gonna find out because I look trying to see if that just opens all in one whack with 12 volts, or if it uh, actually is like a motorized. Because it, it seems like for the heater control, you wouldn't want it all or nothing. If that's what this is for. But I don't know. It calls it a bypass valve. So and if. Maybe just needs two states closed and open. So we'll find out what makes that tick in the next video. Okay. This is about how much coolant leaked out underneath there. It wasn't too much, so I already topped off the reservoir. I'm getting ready to take it for a ride. See if we can clear that code. Okay. Got this uh four scan hooked up. Turn the key on. Saved car. I don't know if there's something you could do in the settings, but it always wants to do the body control module. I'm just going to go ahead and let it do it. I flip the switch down here when it asks you to, and then you hit OK. And then it identifies all the modules that the car has. So, DTCs and IPC. Okay, I didn't ever pay attention to that before. Let's see, I think I need to flip this back over to. Okay, let's see if it'll. It is in that position, right? Cycle engine off. And back on. Push OK. I don't know why it wants it over to the other position. I probably did check everything out. Oh, that's the first time I said that in a while. No codes. So now we're going to go ahead and start it. I do need to flip this back. So we can do real time logging. It is. All right. Take it for a drive. See how it works. Okay. I'm gonna turn this off. It's gonna get rolled down the windows. I'm gonna get real hot real fast. Turn it back on. That's normal for that to disconnect. Okay. Let's see if it does the check there. Where it says EC bypass valve on. It seemed like after yesterday it goes yes fault. Uh oh, that's not good. No fault. I know there's no check engine light, so maybe I'm reading that live fault a little wrong there. So. Um, hmm. Hopefully that fixed it. <laughs> The check engine light DTC did not come back, so it's interesting. Valve F fault. Hmm. Well, that's a little troublesome. I guess we'll just have to drive this car and see if that fixed it or not. From what I've read on the internet, that valve uh, 
re being replaced is always what cured that diagnostic code. Never saw anything else about it, intermittent wiring or any other sensors or anything like that. So hopefully that was it. That was 60 bucks. <laughs>